year ago, an engine on one of its massive A380s exploded in midair. A lot of things went wrong that day. In fact, the flight crew had to deal with more than 60 separate system failures. But a lot of things also went right, thanks largely to the man at the controls. Only his cool head and keen instincts got the plane down safely. It truly is an amazing story. At first glance, the Airbus A380 could be any jetliner hurtling down the runway. But this one just keeps getting bigger and bigger. It's hard to believe something this large could ever leave the ground, until it does. The A380 is a massive feat in engineering, a marvel of ingenuity. It's the biggest passenger in our skies, and it is awesome. One of those Qantas planes came so close to crashing to the ground, so close to losing 469 people, it's unthinkable. Tonight we go inside the most serious near disaster Qantas has ever faced. Pan, 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 Qantas 3-2, engine failure number two engine. A close-up look at what went horribly wrong with QF32. There's a massive Perhaps hole over there. And we meet the extraordinary flight crew, led by the unassuming captain, Richard de Crepney. Impacts, maybe a hundred impacts on the wing. Who managed to bring the A380 safely back to the ground. Was it a smooth landing, scale of one to 10, one of your finest? Oh, I think it was my finest landing, absolutely. <laughs> it was my finest landing. I think I should give up aviation now <laughs> and leave on a high, because I think it was a good landing under tough conditions. All right, Carl, welcome aboard, US Navy. If there's a problem, the emergency exits are everywhere. You don't have to know Richard de Crepney long to know that both in the air and on the sea, he makes a fine captain. Let's go. Have you got enough runway, Captain? <laughs> we have good runway today. Plenty of runway today. Richard's from Sydney. A dad to Alex and Sophia, husband to Coral. He was the guy to be in that aircraft on that day. There's no one. There is, I am so confident, there is nobody in this world who knows that aircraft better than Rich. I would want him up there. Richard de Crepney is a 25-year veteran of Qantas. Before that, he flew in the Air Force. But what happened on November 4th, 2010, was a once-in-a-lifetime event. I don't think an Airbus aircraft has ever been challenged as much as, as this has. I think a Rolls-Royce engine's never failed so spectacularly with so much collateral damage. It was a flight that you could never train for. You might practice one or two emergencies, not 60. QF-32 was only minutes into its flight out of Singapore, but unknown to anyone, there was a small oil leak in what's called the intermediate pressure turbine of engine number two. In the super hot engine, the oil ignited. And within seconds, one of the 160 kilogram turbine discs exploded at incredibly high speed. Two pieces smashed through the wing, severing the plane's controls, while a third did the same underneath the plane. It was actually two sounds like boom, boom. Ah, all right, something's wrong. I'm going altitude hold and I'll go constant heading. And I'm What's gonna that? cancel. This is the master course, master warning. Something is seriously wrong. In an instant, so many things went seriously wrong with the Qantas plane that even now it's impossible to replicate in the A380 simulator. Qantas 3-2, we have an engine failure, number two engine. We have fuel leaks on the left-hand wing. Richard's first task was to make sure the crippled aircraft could still fly. Then he needed to find out what did and didn't work anymore. Engine number two, overheat and failure. Engines one and four degraded two levels in thrust. Electrically, the left-hand side of the aircraft was dead. We lost 50% of the hydraulic systems. The brakes underneath the wings were reduced to 30% braking efficiency. And anti-skid was inoperative. Fuel system. Three tanks out of 11 functioned. 
No transfer system was available. No jettison system was available. We had multiple holes in the wing, which disrupted the airflow over the wing and caused the stall speed to increase. Was anything actually working? <laughs> ah, that's a good question. Every system was degraded. Modern planes automatically send messages to the engineers on the ground. So the drama in the sky was being frantically tracked back in Sydney. It was um, a pretty hectic day, I can tell you, that one. Qantas's head of maintenance operations, Alan Milne, watched his computer screen go crazy. Wing leak, brakes. Yep. Faults on the wing, brakes, brakes, brakes. But at least he knew the A380 was still flying. I mean, I was one of the lucky ones. I was here, we had the information that the aircraft was stable. It was at 7,000 feet. They were circling off, uh, off Singapore there. This is where it starts to get bad from here all the way through to here. The A380 is still in Singapore today. And seeing the damage close up gives you a better idea of how desperate the situation was in the air. Uh, I don't think you get prepared for seeing it uh, in real life. It's a substantial amount of damage. This is the first time Richard and Alan have seen the plane since the incident. And quite frankly, it's a mess. When you see that. That is significant. Um, is that a shock to you? It is a shock. Holes in the wing, severed control lines, and a fuselage splattered with debris. It's like someone's got a shotgun and gone bang yeah. onto the fuselage. It's that sort of pattern. There was just a loud um, bang and a shudder. And then it slightly more stressful when the piece of wing at the front that had mashed up flew back across the top of the wing back behind the plane. And I had an elderly couple beside me that I couldn't really say, hey, you should have seen that, that's not good. Unluckily for her, passenger Claire Ryan in seat 74A probably had the best view of the engine explosion and the damage it caused to the left-hand side of the aircraft. And from what she saw, it's no wonder she feared the worst. I thought that it was good that I could still see the land because when the plane fell out of the sky, at least it wouldn't take them too long to recover our body and my mother to bury me. You thought the absolute worst? Yeah, and do it a bit more practically. Well, that's okay. Well, they'll find me at least. But Claire hadn't counted on Richard de Crepney and his team in the cockpit. He had co pilot Matt Hicks and second officer Mark Johnson helping out. But also, there was a duck that was seven in the wing as well. And there was more good luck that day. Senior Qantas captains Harry Wubbin and David Evans were also on the flight deck doing routine checks. Between them, the crew had 140 years of piloting skill. It would be hard to find a more A380 experienced crew on the planet. I apologise, I'm sure you're aware we have a technical issue with our uh, number two engine. All that experience might explain this. But the aircraft is secure at this stage, we're going to have to hold for some time. Dave Evans' soothing address to the passengers. The aircraft is, uh, is flying safely and we'll get back to you very shortly with further information. Thank you for your patience. The average passenger today, they understand aeroplanes more than ever before uh, and you can't fob them off with uh, a technical issue. It was a profound PA and it really did settle the cabin crew and the passengers. But that's not to say things weren't tense. The second officer, Mark Johnson, was sent back into the main cabin to get a better look at the damaged wing and engine. He was shocked at what he saw. I think his words were the engine stuffed. Are you sure about it. stuffed? I, I think it was stuffed. It might have actually been a little bit more severe. <laughs> this is a family show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it might have been a yacht expletive. He said that with a hole in the wing, there's fuel gushing out of the wing, and the engine is in a bad state. 1032, we require to hold for at least another 30 minutes before making an approach. Honest 3-2, Roger, you are priority traffic. 
In the air, Richard de Crepney had to contemplate the unimaginable. As more checks came up, you started to question how many systems will I have left? Has a whole aircraft failed? Two zero centre. We have emergency services on standby. I thought, let's protect this aircraft at the most basic level possible. And that was to position it within gliding range of Singapore. And that's what we did. That's a big call. Well, it's the... Gliding an A380. Gliding an A380. And, and you prepare for the worst and you hope for the best. But the preparation in this case was putting us within gliding range of Singapore. And that's something I've not done since I was in the Air Force. This was monumental. This was monumental. Final approach, runway 20. Eventually, after almost an hour and three quarters, the flight crew decided to attempt a landing. Clear for final approach, 20 centre, quarter 32. Carl, you can see the runway straight out in front of us now. There might have been five pilots, but getting the jet back on the ground safely came down to one man's skill. So you have to time this absolutely perfectly. This is the time for a good landing. We're in the simulator, but it still feels very real. It's a four kilometre long runway, but it does not look it from here. No, and when we're doing 200 miles per hour, it uh, certainly doesn't feel like it either. Richard's landing, even in a broken aeroplane, is as smooth as they come. And we're on to the ground. I use maximum foot brakes now because the auto brakes have failed. As the emergency vehicle swarmed over the aircraft, back in Australia, news of the incident was spreading but much of it was wrong. Richard's wife, Coral, didn't even know there'd been an explosion until she got a call from Richard's boss at Qantas. He said, I need to tell you that Richard's safe and he's on the ground. And I said, why are you telling me this? <laughs> and then he said, well, there's been an incident. So I immediately turned on the news and then I saw that it wasn't, well, I had assumed there'd been a crash. So there was actually a time when you thought maybe he's crashed. It was a time, it was just a very short second, yes. You see the news and they're saying a crash and, well, you know, I started to cry. But when the details emerged about what really happened, what ran through your mind? I'm just so glad he didn't stop up that landing. <laughs> <laughs> so are a lot of other people. <laughs> Claire Ryan is one of those people. Fantastic man, fantastic, and I think uh, maybe a lesser man might have not handled, wouldn't have handled it so well. Would you fly with him again? Oh, without a doubt. I'd like to know when his next flights are. I'll try and book it out. What's his timetable? <laughs> How many passengers owe their lives to you? Oh, Carl. Um, but I can't answer that question. There'll be people watching this story who will say that guy is a dead set hero for what he did that day. How does that sit with you? Well, I don't really like having the hero term put on me. Point one, I was just doing my job. Uh, point two, I was supported by an extraordinary crew with lots of experience. However, I was the person who signed off in the aeroplane. I would ultimately be responsible if people died. And I am so proud of everyone and all the teams that helped that day. I was proud to be in command of that aircraft. We're now pretty comfortable this was a single one-off event. After three months of extensive testing and investigations, Qantas is completely confident Rolls-Royce has fixed the engine faults on the Superjet and that a tortured time can finally be put in the past. Is the A380 safe? Absolutely. This was the biggest testament to Airbus. Some people might think the aircraft collapsed under the onslaught, but no aircraft is ever designed to take the beating that this aircraft got. The wing was cluster bombed. The aircraft had phenomenal damage in all systems. And it didn't just recover, it performed brilliantly. It is indestructible. <laughs>